Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Kmak. I work in developer relations at Nervous Network. And uh, today let me show you uh, how you can set up a developer network for working with Nervous Layer 2. So right now we are going through a Gitcoin hackathon and I hope your projects uh, are going uh, well. So when you are building apps on Nervous Layer 2, it's actually useful not to only work with testnet, but to also have a developer, uh, uh, but to also have a devnet set up. Why? Because on testnet, it might be a little bit harder to uh, debug your problems and testnet might be a little bit slower. And uh, if you run devnet, then you are in control of this network. So it's easier for you to to deploy application probably and you know to debug any errors that you could have like any failed transactions and uh, yeah let's let's jump to uh, let's jump to <clears throat> the starting point so we'll be using godwoken kika repository um, and it's basically using docker um, to set up everything for you. You will just need to, to run uh, two comments. So really, really simple thing. So um, the first step would be for you to, to clone this, um, to clone this repository. But let me also tell you what we will be doing today. So we will set up a devnet using Godwoken Kicker, but also we will um, show how to change your existing application from using testnet uh, to using devnet. So let's go to terminal. Um, so I already have um, Godwoken Kicker. Um, so I already have Godwoken Kicker because it was uh, previously uh, installed by me. So I need to I need to make sure that um, each time that I want to build uh, a new devnet, then basically I, I need to make sure that this process is clean. So actually, first of all, make sure you have Docker running. So I have just started Docker desktop. I recommend it if you are using a Windows, um, Windows system, then and, and Windows subsystem for Linux, then basically Docker desktop is the easiest way uh, to install Docker. Okay, there's actually some update running for me. Okay, so in the meantime, as, as Docker is updating, uh, this application that we are going to switch from using testnet to using devnet is actually using chaining contracts um, on Nervous Layer 2. So yeah, right now it's using uh, right now it's using a testnet RPC provider, as you can see. Okay, we can see Docker is starting. Okay, and it started. So just if you previously had Godwalk and Kicker installed and you want to follow this tutorial, just make sure that you run sudo make stop and sudo make clean to make sure that next time you set it up, everything's clean. And to be to, to just make sure that everything is clean, you can also run Docker system prune. And I will I'm going to do this. So it will wipe your whole Docker setup on your machine. So you might not want to, to do it necessarily, but in this case, I will do it because sometimes you might have some problems with a Postgres container. And on my machine, it happens. That's why I run Docker system prune. Um, so yeah, we cleaned it. Now we can remove Godwoken Kicker directory entirely and clone it again. So to clone this, 
to clone the token kicker, just copy the URL, uh, git clone. Let's go to this directory. And now let's make sure that we are using correct branch. So by default you have develop, but I recommend you to use the latest release and that is there. So I'm just going to copy 0.7.1 RC2 and use this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to this tag. So I'm running git checkout and using this version. And right now I just need to run two comments. So first one is make init. Just make sure Docker, Docker is running on your machine. And it's setting everything up. Okay, and now we need to run make start. It's creating the containers. And yeah, as you can see here, it's saying that it may take a few minutes to, to actually start. And that's true because right now it's going to deploy all the all the necessary infrastructure. Um, and yeah, it, it takes a while. So we need to we need to wait. <clears throat> If this process uh, fails for you, uh, you can try to restart it. So if, for example, when you are running make start command, um, you get an error that, um, that it couldn't start a Godwoken um, container, for example, or it can, then you can, you, then you can go to make sg logs. So I'm going to open another terminal and this is actually useful for debugging. So if you go to Godot and Kicker directory, and you see right now it's deploying everything, but let's say it's stuck or, um, or it didn't start, there's some error. So what you can do is you can go to this directory in another terminal and type make sg. And sg stands for show Godwoken, and it will show you Godwoken Docker container logs. So let's do that. And you can see that something is actually happening. Um, transactions are being proposed and this is correct because we are deploying scripts right now. You can see it's challenge lock. And yeah, we can clearly see that it's running now and we just need to give it a bit more time. Yeah, you can also see the name of the binary but yeah, if, if make start doesn't work for you, if there's some problem, just make sure to run make sg. <clears throat> and also make sg comment is useful when, for example, you send a transaction to your smart contract and this transaction has failed. So what, what you need to do, you also need to run uh, make sg comment. And in this make sg logs, you will see you will see something like this. So if your transaction really failed, um, then you should see that it returned status code different than zero. So here you can see invalid exit code two and status code is two. So yeah, it means there was a problem with your transaction. And in this case, if you see this in your make SG logs, then I recommend you check the sender and the recipient. Um, where was it? Let me just, yeah. So in these logs, you will find sender and destination. 
and these are this should correspond to your maybe contract address or your um, sender polygis address so not the ethereum address that you have in metamask but the transformed polygis address but destination should always be probably some smart contract or some different account so based on these two parameters you can try to figure out which call failed if you are not exactly sure um, you can also see try to look at output size so right now it's not logged here um, but if you have output size in your failed transaction then, then it means maybe your transaction has reverted and there will be information uh, attached to it which will be probably hex encoded but you can um, decode it to, to a string. So let's go back to our deployment procedure and see how it's going. So we are at 65%, so still, still it will take some time. So as we are waiting for, for this to complete, maybe make sure to clone the example application or maybe you already have your application um, already. But if you don't, just make sure to clone this repository, you know, on your file system. I already cloned it. I'm on master branch. Um, yeah, we can, we can try to see if it's working on testnet. Let's run deploy command. So deploy script in the case of Chainlink Nervous repository is just deploying all the oracles. So, so far so good. Remember we are deploying on testnet. So first it will deploy three aggregators and then it, it will try to add them to feed registry. By the way, if you are not sure what oracles are, it's, it's basically a way um, to get data on chain uh, to your system. So right now, as you can see, we have some problem uh, on testnet. And this is problem with nonsense. And as you can see, this is another reason to, to try developing on devnet instead of developing on testnet. Because unfortunately, uh, there is a problem. The core team is already working to fix it. And this problem is related to the nonces. So as you can see, we have application and it's, we can't deploy it on testnet, like we can't develop it. So yeah, another reason to, to just use the devnet. So let's close this process. Let's see how our devnet deployment is going. Okay, so um, it seems that everything is fine. Well, it started correctly. Uh, I can't wait to test it. So let's just go to this URL, localhost port 6100. Uh, Open this in your browser. And yeah, everything looks fine. So this is the landing page of Godot and Kicker. And there are a couple of interesting things here. You probably just need, you probably don't need everything that's displayed here, but um, yeah, so chain ID, you can use it to you can use it to add a network to your MetaMask. Because if you go to settings, networks, and your network, you have chain ID here. So you probably you want to copy here this value. So that would be the first thing uh, when you set up your MetaMask network. Um, the second thing helpful when you are setting your MetaMask network is Web3 API. So this is actually the most, most important thing because we need to replace the testnet RPC um, with this value. So let's just do that. Let's just go to our application and let's change the RPC from testnet to our devnet and we'll see if it works. So there's 
One more thing though that you need to do before trying to, to run any smart contracts uh, on DevNet. You need to make sure that the account that you are using for the deployment actually has some funds. So how you can make sure that is the case? Right now on the landing page, you see that we have zero CKB. And that's really bad because all transactions we would do would fail. So just make sure you go to Accounts tab, select the address that is connected in your MetaMask. Make sure that in the top left corner of your MetaMask, uh, you see this connected message. And just press Deposit 400 CKB. Yeah, and just, just, let's just wait a bit. In the meantime, make sure that <clears throat> your application is using latest Polyjuice provider. Um, in this demo, I recommend using Polyjuice provider version 0.0.1-RC11. It's the latest version and it works both with DevNet and with TestNet. <clears throat> and in this repository, we are using Ethers, um, Hardhat, and TypeChain, and TypeScript. Okay, so we can see our balance uh, is increased. So that's, that's actually perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should be ready to just run deploy scripts on, on the DevNet. And let's, let's hope that we have more luck uh, on DevNet than we had on TestNet. So let's run deploy command. And as you see, it's, it's much faster and it worked. So it's pretty amazing. Um, the process went really smooth of working with the DevNet. So that's actually, that was actually the most important part of this tutorial. Um, so you could probably stop watching right now and just uh, start <laughs> developing your application but I'm going to talk more about things that can go wrong and how to debug them. So yeah, as you can see, everything seems to be working, which is great. We can check the good woken logs to just make sure that everything really worked. Uh, so we can just run make SG or maybe we are doing it in another, another tab. So. So yeah, Godoken is producing new blocks. That's great. Okay, there are some invalid nonce messages. That's pretty interesting, but we can skip we can skip this if everything worked. And yeah, we can see the handle messages. Mm. Logs. But yeah, you see status code is zero. It means that the transaction succeeded. So yeah, you can basically see all the logs related to, related to your transactions. There are also Polyjuice logs and Web3 logs that are useful when working with Godwoken Kicker. So to view Polyjuice logs, because Docker infrastructure of Godwoken Kicker contains, consists of multiple services. So one of them is, is Polyjuice logs. So if we run make SP, we can also see some logs, but these are not really that useful. It's just basically, it just basically created the account that is, that is uh, managing Ethereum virtual machine for us. So as long as you can see some account ID at the end of make SP logs, probably everything worked. So you can close these logs. And we also have make web3. And if you use make web3, then you will see the logs of the RPC, of the web3 RPC. So yeah, you should probably see here the requests that are happening when you, uh, when you send some transactions. So let's try running deploy command again and let's view web three logs. So yeah, and as, as you can see, as 
the deploy procedure went on, we, we saw like multiple logs being added here. So yeah, it's, it's also useful, useful when you want to um, debug uh, something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically in terms of connecting to the DevNet, it's really simple. So you just need to, um, to use Polyjuice provider, for example, Ethers or Web3 both work. Um, and then you have this Web3 URL, which is corresponding to localhost 8024. Yeah, then you need to construct these providers, but this information is in Polyjuice provider repository. So yeah, every, everything is here, so I'm not going to repeat it. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically all. Just um, just make sure that your MetaMask uh, account has CKB on layer two, because that's a common problem when working with the DevNet that you do not have funds. Let's also maybe try to look at other tabs. So if you are not using the Mm, the provider to deploy contracts in Node.js, then you you can use this deploy contract button. What it will do is you can deploy a contract using this tab. So basically you need to, when you click this, it will open a file explorer. And in this file explorer, you will be able to select either a compiled smart contract or yeah, or the yeah, or the ABI actually, but I mean the artifact with the ABI and the bytecode, like you need to have the bytecode uh, in the JSON you are uploading or the binary file and you will basically have the contract address. So if something isn't working, like for example, you cannot deploy your application contracts or, or something, just make sure that this thing works. So click deploy contract, select the contract, select the compiled contract and and just see if it works, if, if you can deploy it. Just make sure that there are no constructor constructor arguments in your Solidity contract because this doesn't currently support uh, passing arguments in your constructor function. Uh, you can also debug contracts that you already have if you upload ABI and pass a contract address. Mm. This is SUDT tokens demo, so you can either use this if you want to learn more about working with tokens, but also if you prefer to um, read more about how it really works, then you can also check our bounty program instructions. For example, in task four, you will get information how to issue SUDT on layer one, deposit it to layer two, and then also in next tasks like um, like task number five, you will see how to deploy a contract that will allow you to work with this token on layer two. So you actually have multiple ways. And maybe going back to this chain info tab, mm, if you really want to go deep into, into some stuff, like you can verify that rollup script hash is correct when you are calling functions in your application, and eat account log hash. Because it used to be the case that you had to also pass rollup script hash and eat account log hash when you were constructing a provider, but it is no longer the case because right now you just you just need basically an endpoint and that's all. Uh, you can also view <coughs> URLs for other uh, infrastructure that is being run when you are running a kicker. So just make sure that these ports are free on your machine because otherwise you might have errors. But yeah, for example, layer one node, layer one DevNet node is being run as part of the Kicker infrastructure. So you can actually use this too if it makes, makes sense for you. So there are also ways to customize Godwalk and Kicker. Mm. So let's open Godwalk and Kicker repository in VS Code. 
and yeah, there's a couple of interesting things you can do if you want to customize Godoken Kicker. So probably first thing, if you have some problems, then you can go to workspace directory, debug TX dump. And if there are some failures, then you will see some JSON files here. And if you want to report an error um, to the core team or I, to, to the to nervous team that something is wrong uh, with your DevNet, then you probably want to include these files. So it's basically yeah, a very sophisticated log file, which which is useful when someone else would like to like just see into your problem. So yeah, just keep an eye on this directory if something goes wrong and if you report problems, then please also include these files or maybe the, the most recent one. Um, and the second thing that's super interesting about Godoken Kicker is if you go into this Docker directory, you have a file here called buildmode.env. And here, this file is how you can customize Godoken Kicker. So this is more advanced stuff, but yeah, it's, it's possible that it will also work for you. So here you have all the versions that are being used right now by the Godoken Kicker repository. Mm and different versions of these repositories. So by default, Godoken Kicker is using pre-built binaries, um, pre-built Docker binaries. And it's not building this stuff on your machine. So if you want this, if you, if you want some services to be built manually, then you can flip these switches here in manual build Godoken. Um, I recommend if you use this stuff then also flip this flag to true, which is about always fetching new packages. And and yeah, just, just make sure to pass correct tags or branches into this configuration. So we can actually try this try this thing. So let's see. If we go to Godoken JS prebuilds. And if we go to releases here, okay, that's, we actually, I actually opened this one, but so we can, you can see that we are running right now 0.6.2 RC6. And let's say that you saw that in some Godwoken repository, there's a new fix that you would really like to, to use on your machine. So what you need to do is you need to go to this Prebuilds repository and copy the tag that you are interested in. So, for example, let me grab this one and I'll swap this. So, this should give me more recent Godwoken version. Um, it's also not guaranteed to, to work. So, basically, it, it's more advanced stuff, but it, it, may, it may fail for you uh, as well. So this is good. And let's see JS pre-builds. Okay, so the, these are JS pre-builds. So this consists of Web3 service and the Polymon service. Polymon service is a tool that is setting the whole kicker up. So it basically creates some accounts, does some deployments. It's just like very high level stuff. And Web3 is a wrapper over Godoken architecture, which um, makes sure that MetaMask and other stuff works and the Ethereum tooling works uh, on Godwoken. So here we have the most recent version, I think. Yeah, this is most recent version. So right now we have the latest versions of this stuff, which is great, but how to actually use it? So what I recommend doing is actually copying this just just to copy this file somewhere else for now. And 
and just stop Godoken Kicker and try to deploy it again. Because we changed a, a, a really important piece of our infrastructure. So <clears throat> we need to do the same thing as we did uh, in the beginning of this tutorial. So run sudo make stop, sudo make clean. Okay, it's been stopped. Now let's remove this directory. Let's clear Docker images. Let's clone Kicker again. Let's check out the tag. Let's just make sure it's it's correct one. Yes, it is. Now copy your backed up build mode and file with the new components. And let's just again run make init and make start. So this time we are using docker prebuilt image 0.6.4 rc1 hotfix1. So let's see. Okay, and we see it's actually been checked out in make init command. So yeah, let's just wait for the process to complete and, and we'll see um, if we can deploy our contracts again. By the way, in the meantime, if you're not already part of our Discord channel, um, Nervous Network Discord channel, and our Gitcoin Hackathon channel, then we then I recommend you join uh, this channel. And if you have any problems with the infrastructure or, or with your application, just you just ask a question there, and probably someone from the developer relation team um, will help you. Um, with, with your stuff. We are usually pretty active there and each day we are trying to prepare new examples. Like yesterday I prepared this ethers.js example because some people were saying that it's hard for them to use uh, ethers.js with our devnet. So yeah, just basically if you have any problem then we are uh, here uh, to help. Well, this is still being set up again. Um, let's see what you can also do when something goes wrong when you are using um, Godoken Kicker. So if you search for Rust log, for Rust log in Godoken Kicker repository, then you have different levels of logging. And as you can see, it's even different per per different components of Godwoken itself. So what you can do is change these flags mm. to debug, for example. So if we change from info to debug, then you should basically have more logs uh, of the stuff that, that you are using. So this is something that you can definitely try. And if there's still not enough logs here, what you can do is I think in Rust you can also remove this and just leave it as Rust log equals debug. And it will just set the level of logging for the whole infrastructure to be debug, which is, I think, it's uh, it's the highest level of of logging, so you will see all the logs. So we can actually try this. And you also have Rust log when you are running indexer, but I don't think really that CKB indexer is, is going to be that important when you, are, when you have problems with your layer two applications on Nervous. So I just recommend leaving it uh, as it is. Oh, and we have a problem here, and that's that's actually a good thing. So as you can see, it said that Godoken service isn't running. Please run make SG. 
uh, to check what happened. Okay, this is exactly what we are going to do. Okay, I need to re-enter the directory because I removed it. Okay, and it says son comment not found, which, which is super interesting. Uh, I have really no idea why is this happening. But what we can try is we can try restarting. Uh, restarting Godoken. So it's interesting because the problem is actually in the file that I was editing before. So, so it's possible that I have just changed something and, and this is why it's not working. So... But it should be fine. Yeah, I think this should be fine. So previously we were stuck at 68%. So let's see if, if we are stuck again uh, there. So we are approaching 68%. And let's see if we have more luck than we had previous time. Let's watch make SG logs while this is happening. Okay, so we got past 68%. So that's actually great because everything that I'm saying in this tutorial from the beginning, we are actually able to see it and we can, you can see how you can debug such problems. So that's actually perfect. Um, we are at deploy genesis right now, 70%. Uh, it might still fail, but I hope it doesn't. But yeah, that's, that's why I recommend using just the latest Godoken Kika release. Um, because the components were tested. It's like, you know, putting together a, a new PC where, you know, some components might not work with each other. So it's the same way with Godoken Kika. If you use something that we recommend, then you have the best chance that everything will work as smoothly. Okay, it seems it like it worked. Let's just double check by going to localhost page. Okay, looks good so far. Let's try to deposit some CKB to our address and let's see how it goes. And what we are going to do to make sure that everything is fine is we are going to run deploy comment again. And we'll see if it works. Okay, let's see. In MakeSG logs, there seems there it seems like there are some problems here. So it's really interesting, but it seems like it's it's not really working. Ah, okay, so these logs are just because we have enabled the debug logs. So now you 
have logs everywhere basically. So probably maybe that was actually a bad idea because we also see some logs that are unrelated to, to the Godwoken itself. So maybe if you go back um, to the layer two entry point file, Probably it's good if we just change it to debug here, but also, or maybe, yeah. Actually, I think it's probably the best if you just leave it as it is. Like, if you really want to go to like very detailed level, you can use this debug thing, but as you can see, later you have logs of like bunch of tools that are unrelated. Um, so yeah, probably not that useful. So it seems we have some problems with this and it seems like it's not going to work. I can try running deploy command, but I don't think everything is correct. Yeah, it seems that we weren't able to, to deposit funds. What you can do at this point is you can either, you can try running make start command again um, after running make stop. But yeah, it's it's not guaranteed that it will work. Mm. Unfortunately. But yeah, so so that's how the process actually looks like if you want to to swap some of the components. Um but yeah, there's also another way. Let's just restore this, this config. There's also other way how you can work with Kicker, which is just using this manual building of stuff. So we can try to manually build our packages. Yeah, so let's, J, let's say we just want to manually build maybe good Woken package and Polyjuice package, and maybe Web3. Like these are probably three most important uh, packages. So as soon as you switch this manual build flags to true, then these pre-built Docker images, at least some of them will be ignored. And this section is, is now the most important. So, these are the tags from these repositories. So if you want to use newer good Woken, you can follow this link, go to releases page, yeah, and, and try using some, some newer tag. But yeah, it's not guaranteed it will work, but we can try. Um, I want to demonstrate it so, so you see how it works. So yeah, we updated Godwoken package. So maybe let's just manually build this one and also change always fetch new package True, true. Yeah, and let's let's back up this config. Let's clear Godwoken Kicker again and set everything up from scratch. Okay, so use your backed up build mode .n file. And let's run make init and make start again. But this time we are manually building uh, these repositories and we are not using pre built binaries uh, from Docker images. So let's see how it works. 
Okay, so as you can see, there are more logs because everything is being built now on our machine right now, so... So right now, the Godoken package is being compiled using Rust. And we are using the tag that we are that we have specified in our build mode.env file. So as you can see this thing here. Um, is matching the one that we have specified here. It will probably take much longer time than using pre-built Docker binaries because of this manual build process. So it looks like the compilation of Godoken has succeeded and we are now building Docker images probably. And again, we are going through the process of the deployment of, uh, of basically everything. And we'll see if this time um, it will work when, when we swapped out Godoken component and we are manually building um, this particular component. Okay, it looks good so far. Let's, let's see if this time we can deposit funds to our account. All right. Okay, it looks good. This time we were able to deposit when we were using manual build with changed good token package. So yeah, manual building feels riskier than just using pre-built um, Docker images, but we were lucky. So let's see if we can do a deployment now. It seems that there's some error here. Can't find the backend for script hash. Um, Okay, so as you see, something different is wrong this time with using um, this custom manual build with these packages. So I don't know, maybe we would need to bump Godot and Polyjuice and, and some other packages, probably Godot and scripts, because if you update Godot, then you should probably also update Godot and scripts. But yeah, uh, bottom line. Uh, Yeah, bottom line is basically just uh, ideally if you are using Godot and Kicker just use the latest release. It should be tested and uh, it should work well as, as you saw in the beginning of the video. As soon as we try to swap some things, then it's not guaranteed that it will work. But if your application has some problem and you know it's been fixed, so there are two things you can do. So first thing is you can try to swap some compo component by yourself if you think that your bug might have already been fixed uh, in Godot and Kicker in, in some of the repositories that Godot and Kicker is using. And the second thing you could do is, is you could report this problem to us and we will probably try to prepare a, a new Godot and Kicker version uh, for you, which will work and, and uh, will be tested. So, yeah, I think that's it. I think we covered all the important parts. Um, make sure to join our Discord channel, our Gitcoin Hackathon um, channel on Nervous Network server. And yeah, we are there uh, to help you with any problems uh, you might have. And yeah, uh, happy building. I wish you uh, 
all the best building applications during this uh, nervous uh, hackathon. And yeah, uh, I hope you, you win some prize. So that's been it and uh, thank you.